Greetings, peace, and blessings, shalom, shalom, to all the Hebrew camps, congregation, connected, my beloved brothers, sisters of that Hebrew connection, near and far, scattered abroad. I am Priest Banyala of the House of Wisdom, joined today by my reader, Yara Dunn, and we are set to explore another powerful class dealing with the seven pillars, titled The Seven Pillars and a Virtuous Woman. talking about the seven pillars in the power of virtue we have broke down the first pillar being knowledge which is written information here in the Bible and then a sent man gives you the understanding which is the second pillar discretion which is the ability to discern good from evil which is the third pillar and then with that discretion you have to be equitable utilize it with your family your friends your neighbors strangers and then you move on to the fifth pillar which is justice. Justice means being right, but not being right one time. Being right as a lifestyle, forever. You choose to live this way perpetually. Then we move on to the sixth pillar, which is judgment. It's when you examine a situation and you judge the situation and say, I've studied for this particular moment. Then you execute the proverb. Then and only then, the one becomes wise. So today we're about to take you through the very first step, which is the knowledge of the Heavenly Father in Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Those of us who are already cognizant of what virtue is, we know that it is a rare thing to find a woman who is conscientious of walking in seven pillars and accumulating virtues. Her worth and value now increases above that of Ruby's intangible wealth. Read that again. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above Ruby's. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Her worth has increased. With who has her worth increased? Read the 11th verse again. The heart of her husband. Her husband set that value. Not every schmo on the street. She's not an actress. She's not a, a butt model on Hustler magazine. She now has set her worth, not with the entire earth, but with her husband. Her husband do it safely, trust in her. Read that 11 verse again. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. So that he shall have no need of spoil. He will have no need of ever being spoiled, destroyed, or done wrong by his wife. He safely confide in her. How is it that he safely confide in her? Get that in Titus, the second chapter. Get Titus 2 and pick it up in the, uh, the third verse. Her husband has set the value or what it is that his wife is worth. And her worth is more than anything that can ever be compared or priced in this whole entire earth. It is worth more than silver and gold. It is worth more than rubies and gems. It is worth more than the whole entire Federal Reserve System to this brother. He has set that price. He has set that worth to be that which could not be compared to by anybody. Let's get Titus, the second chapter. And we're going to pick it up in the seventh verse. Titus 2, verse 7. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. This is a sister that has showed herself a pattern of good works. This is what biblical trust is. Trust is not blind belief. This is where you always get up in, uh, caught up in scams and schemes. 
This is where you always get caught up in a trap. People saying, blindly just believe me. No, the wife shows a pattern, a systematic structure of good works. Read that again. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. She shows a pattern of good works. And then when she shows that pattern, drop that. Go back to Proverbs 31, verse 11. When she comes and is constantly for weeks and for months and for years, constantly doing what is good and pleasing in the eyes of the Heavenly Father first, her husband begins to see the rudiments of a virtuous woman. And then what happens? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 11. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. He safely trusts in her. So sisters, the knowledge is, is that the Heavenly Father has put forth these staples here for us to reform and to reshape ourselves. Get that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon. The ninth chapter. And the 18th verse. Wisdom of Solomon 9, 18. We have to realize that where we are today is not how we were initially formed. The Heavenly Father created us to be great, to be godly, to be in tune intuitively with the ways of the Spirit. But we have sought out many strange inventions and we have incorporated in our world things that are not befitting. You know what I'm talking about. Young sisters now are growing up watching and listening to Empire. Watching the Atlanta housewives, or all of the housewives, watching love and hip hop. And they're sitting back studying, now being indoctrinated on what it is to be a woman. They're now teaching your daughters from the womb what it is to be a woman. And that's nothing. Absolute pure trash in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. Read it, Wisdom of Solomon 9, 18. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. So the ways of them who lived in the earth were reformed, changed. Brothers and sisters, let's get it in our mind that we were not born into righteousness. You were not born a virtuous woman. You have to be reformed. You have to be formed again, cast again into the shape of a virtuous woman. Now we know this term virtuous woman. Oh my Lord, I see it all over the place. Women got on the tightest, shorts running all up their butt, and they talk, on the back of the butt of the short, talk, virtuous woman. It's an oxymoron. You're dressing like whores and sluts, but you're writing on your, your, your garment, I'm virtuous. This is oil and water. Brothers and sisters, we must be reformed, reshaped, retaught. Read it. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse, 10, verse 18. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. The Heavenly Father sent forth the Holy Spirit to teach us, our brothers and sisters, the things that are pleasing to the Heavenly Father, because the Father is well aware of the debauchery that we have devolved into. Now it's time for greatness to come. It's time for brothers and sisters who are sick of being objectified by the muscles of their big butt. Isn't this something now? The fad now is sisters got to have the biggest abnormal backside there is. So much so that sisters are endangering their lives. Go look it up. Sisters are getting silicone butt injection on the street in the hood. Lay on my couch right here, girl. Somebody go give me that, uh, go to Home Depot and get some silicone. And they out of silicone, just get some caulk. Just get some caulk. Some cement or whatever. You know? And sh like a tire. Sh 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 Nicki Minaj, there it is. And this stuff is causing all kind of health ramifications. But for the moment, supposedly you look good. But in the long run, you didn't destroy yourself. Everything is fake. Everything is no frills. Everything is knockoff. We just read, went, went through that. Brothers and sisters want that deep information, the seven seals. That class is powerful dealing with the second millennium after creation. That the same things that are going on today were going on back then. Sisters enhancing their sexuality and talking about, I want you to look at my mind and your breast is all dangling. Come on, sis. 
You're going to get exactly what you put out there. You want to dress sexy? Then you're going to attract men who want to have sex with you. This is not what a virtuous woman is all about. The Heavenly Father is telling us we must be reformed, rebuilt, re-indoctrinated with the ways of truth. You're going to hold that wisdom of Solomon 9 because we're going to come back there. Let's get Proverbs 31.10 again. And the Heavenly Father is saying that this is why it is so difficult and so hard to find a virtuous woman. Because there's a battle between good and evil. The world is telling you that good is evil and evil is good. Sisters, you must be hypersexual. You must be sexualized on a major level to be attractive. You must put on those fake eyelashes and the fake hair and, the, and bleach your skin. And you must pump your lip and you got to put all this on. You got to look like that. And you got to drip. And all the while, you drape with a thousand dollar outfit and you piss poor and emaciated in the spirit. Proverbs 31.10. Who can find a virtuous woman? As the scripture says, who can do it? It's very rare. Very rare to find a woman who understands the seven pillars of wisdom, know them by heart, and know how to walk through them, know how to explain it. And who could pick up a proverb and say, oh yeah, that's the knowledge. I remember the priest gave the understanding. I got discretion, equity, justice, judgment. And when I see that situation, I'm going to execute that and I'm going to do it. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get the virtue. What is that? Spiritual currency. When the Messiah healed folk, it said virtue left him. So I'm going to learn to heal the sores and the sicknesses that are in my family. I know my brother. They all cast him away and they said he ain't no good. He's going to be on drugs and alcohol forever. But I'm going to accumulate that virtue and I'm going to put it in my prayer and ask my father to heal my younger brother or my mother. Or my... That's a virtuous woman who depends on the heavenly father. Brothers and sisters are being reformed. It's a reform. It is a rare thing. Very rare thing to find. That Proverbs 31.10 again. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Her husband is the one that set that price. He wouldn't trade her for anything. He know that that's his lifeline right there. He have studied her. And as it says in Titus 2.7, as we have already gone through, he have seen that this woman has a pattern of good work. She's not fickle and she fly off the hinge and she's over here doing that and she's ratting and talking about him. And then she went over here and stole the money and she went over here and smoked up the rent money. That's not a pattern. That's, yeah, that's a pattern actually. That's a pattern of evil. A husband sees the pattern of good works going down. And so what did he do? He con confidently kicked back and said, my wife would never do me evil. Because it's not that she fear what I will do. She fear and reverence the heavenly father. She's not serving me. She's serving the Heavenly Father who told her to serve me. Read on. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She will do him good because she understands what it is to be virtuous. She will always accumulate that virtue all the days of her life and never ever ever I don't care what spirit of evil comes she will never ever devalue her husband in which the heavenly father have chosen her to be a part of because she knows the purpose of a virtuous woman pause right there and get it in Proverbs the 12th chapter we're still giving you the understanding to the knowledge the second pillar so that you can take it and you can be more empowered by it Get Proverbs 12, and let's start at the uh, fourth verse. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. This is why he's safely trusting in her now. Now he's popping his collar and said that I'm honored to be a part of this woman. She is like the crown upon a king's head. What is that crown upon a king's head? It shows the luxury of his kingdom. It shows the dominance of his kingdom. And can you ever sell the crown? Yeah, it's made of alloys, gold, silver, and it's made of precious gems and jewels. And so you might find the worth of it to be, let's think about it. Let's say one of the richest men on this planet, Bill Gates. Go over to the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, and say, hey, hey, uh, I, I've had my people look at that crown. 
Yeah, I've looked at it, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've estimated it to be worth $29 million. $29 million, all right? What we're going to do is give you a billion dollars for that crown. I want to take it, I want to put it home, I want to put it in my case. Guess what the queen is going to say, I guarantee you. No, the crown is not for sale. It is not for sale. No, 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 no. You can't sell the crown. I don't care if you triple, a hundred, quadruple, a billion times the worth, the actual worth. When you sell the crown, that means I've sold the kingdom. If a man get rid of his crown, I've got rid of my kingdom. I've got rid of the thing that assists me to get where I've gotten. What is a virtuous woman to a man of wisdom? Read it again. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. But she that maketh a shame is a rottenness in his bone. But her that knows nothing about wisdom and accumulating virtue is like bone cancer in a man. He can't wait to find some kind of panacea or medicine to get rid of. A virtuous woman is irreplaceable. Go back to Proverbs 31.10. This is why her value is there in the heavens. There is no carnal, finite value that you can put on. I trade her for uh, a couple of limousines and a, and a Bentley. No, no, you keep all that because with her, there's a high percentage and potential of me getting all that anyway because I know the worth of a virtuous woman. We're working on spiritual planes now and not carnal planes. Let's continue. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. 31 10 again. That's correct. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of, his, of her life. All right. Let's leave there and go back now to Wisdom of Solomon in the ninth chapter where you are. So now we find that there is a cohesion. There is a form of synergy happening between husband and wife. And the husband, obviously, we have already talked about it in the seven pillars in the power of virtue. And Lord willing, we're going to continue to talk about it. The reformation and change that is happening among men. But also, there's a reformation and change that must happen among women. It's not a one-sided street here. Men got to get their act together, and then women go, no, no, no. Bo uh, both parties need to get their act together. And today we're focusing on the women. And so now it is a rare thing to find a virtuous woman. That lets you know that a great percentage of our sisters is off. Off is two left feet trying to go right. It's just amazingly off. The things that we have been taught to incorporate into our world of what is right and what is good and what is pious and what is great. They are literally feeding you toxic spirituality, which is not spirituality at all. It's carnality posing as spirituality. And it is our job to do what? Let's read it. Wisdom of Solomon 9. Verse 17. Verse 18 now. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed. And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee and were saved through wisdom. The Heavenly Father is now sending forth, get Genesis now. The Father is sending forth the Holy Spirit, Genesis 2.18. To now reform our brothers and sisters. To recast, reshape, put us in a position where we can now chisel off. Like any crown. Like I said, it's made of things that are just uh, beautiful at the end result. But in the initial, it was not. The gold, when you find it in the earth, looks like regular old rocks. When you find a gem, it looked like something a little different, but it still looked like a rock. But it still need to be taken. That gold, that silver need to be smelted and refined and take all the nickel out and take the other alloys out so you can get that refined gold or fine gold. Those gems need to be cut, chipped, shaped, and then polished so that it can shine. So if a woman is a crown to a man, she must also go through this reformation. She must go through this furnace of adversity, a furnace of affliction, she must be changed. And now changing is not going to be an easy thing. It's not a beautiful thing in terms of feelings and emotion. It's a beautiful thing in terms of the outcome, but the initial is painful. To get rid of things that you thought were good, 
to begin to undo ways that are detrimental to righteousness. Very hard. And only the strong will make it through that. Genesis 2.18. And the Lord power said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me. Look at what the Lord, Lord said. Wisdom of Solomon 9, he says, We need to be reformed. I need to remake man. So woman need to re, be remade. And how does she need to be remade? Until the help meet. Meet means good. The woman should be good help for the man. Read it again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Lord power said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and the help meet for him. I will make man good help. Slide over to Genesis, the first chapter, the 26th verse. So the heavenly father said, I will reform my sisters, my daughters, and the sisters of man. And I'm going to make them again to how they initially were. So the first point of business is you need to be made to be a help mate for man, for a husband, an assistant, a pillar of rest, a support element. Something right there to carry him on. That's what we read in Proverbs 31. Her husband set that value. This woman next to me is incredibly good help. I couldn't do it alone. She was right there supporting and assisting and everything. When I was down, she helped bring me up. When I was up, she met me right there. We went through this thing, through the storms and through the earthquakes and through the tempest. A lot of people looking for women or women are looking for men to celebrate the good moments. Anybody can do that. You can get an actor to do that. There's a lot of gold diggers that'll do that. They'll ride with you as long as you're paying and getting that money out. But a good wife is there to help you stabilize through the storms, encourage you that we're going to make it through these tough times. We depend on the Heavenly Father. We birth, both are walking in virtue, and we know the seven pillars. We can't lose. We can only win. Genesis 126. And the Most High said, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. On that spiritual level, on that spiritual plane. Let's read. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Lord said, let us give man dominion. And let us give a woman the ability to assist him in dominating. This is the purpose of a woman, not to dominate, but to assist him in his governance and his rulership. A lot of times women are absolutely the opposite. This is why we need to be reformed. She is over him, keeping him stymied and flaccid, knocking him every time he try to make a move, every time he try to come up. And she coming out of this dismal state we're in is not an easy thing. And brother's going to make nine times out of ten the wrong decision. But if it's a godly man trying, he's trying to make this move to get his people out of poverty and he failed. A virtuous woman there is good help. You failed on that one. But we'll, hey, keep that spirit going. We'll try next time. We'll. But a wicked woman, oh, you dumb idiot. You ain't, I, I knew you wasn't it. You a piece of crap. She's knocking him and she's destroying him. She's eating him up like cancer and rottenness in the bone. Get a man. Give, give an eagle room to flex his wings, man. Jumping out of that nest, he might fall and hit the ground, but then he got to stretch again and get back up. Sisters, this is what a virtuous woman is. She is there to aid and assist and her husband flying and raising that family to new heights and new elevations. And that's not going to happen with a cancerous woman next to him. Let's read. Genesis 1.27. So the Most High created man in his own image. In the image of the Most High created he him. Male and female created he them. So he created male and female with their distinctive purposes. Now, in the world we live today, these purposes are conflated. I can do whatever a man can do. You've all mixed the purposes. Now, a woman's purpose is the same purpose as a man. And a man's purpose is the same as a woman. 
And there's no distinction between the two. And this is why families and relationships are massively dysfunctional. Massively dysfunctional. And now they're telling you through the television, through social media, what to do. You know how many, it's, I'm bombarded daily with images of subservient men. And women espouse that. I, I want a man to open my door. What's wrong with your hands? Well, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just a general, that's the romantic thing. You know what romantic means? It means Romanized. It means that this is what the Romans would do. And I'm not a damn Roman. If my woman wrist is too weak to open the door, we might not be rolling. It seems to me you're going to be sitting back on the couch with your legs kicked up, watching housewives in empire with a bag of potato chips in your hands. No, a virtuous woman, as we'll read in Proverbs 31, stays busy. She's always about her business and her family, and walking those seven pillars of wisdom. I want a man that's gonna throw a coat on a puddle of mud. What? I'm gonna ruin my coat? Cause you can't be intelligent enough to walk around the mud puddle? You're a little light woman. You're a little dingy in the head. That's what the Romans would do. Well, I'm not a Roman, like I said before. I'm a Hebrew Israelite of the tribe of Judah, son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who I am, with honor. Let's go back to Genesis now, the first chapter, and pick it up in the 27th verse again. So the Most High created man in his own image. In the image of the Most High created he him. Male and female created he them. And the Most High blessed them. And the Most High said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth. And subdue it. Look at what the father said here. Not only did he said have dominion over the earth. Let's continue on. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth. Not earth. only have dominion over the earth. And Eve or woman support him. I want you both to be fruitful. Like a tree. And multiply. Now let's check out fruitful trees. There are wild olive trees and there are those tamed olive berries that's fit for consumption wild olive berries is just a tree that's just got no governance whatsoever it's just growing out but the tamed olive berries are those who are multiplying in order so what i'm getting at is that being fruitful and multiplying not just popping out babies and letting them being a product of the welfare system Section 8, food stamps everywhere. If you're getting that, that's what you do. That's what, you, that's what you own for the moment. But that shouldn't be your permanent station. Every time I hear brothers and sisters talking about being fruitful and multiply, the government is paying them rent. The government is giving them their food. The government is giving them a stipend. You know the three things I just mentioned, the father said that's what a husband should do? So in all actuality, your wife is married to the government. And you coming in and trying to bust down and doing, where's my food? Sisters and brothers, we are to be fruitful and multiply in order. You multiply within your capacity, but yet the aim is to indeed multiply. We live in a world today where having children can hold you back from a career. We live in a, way, a world that having children can keep you from climbing the corporate ladder. You can't let that be your decisive your decision maker when it comes to being fruitful and multiply. Our job here on earth is to have dominion over it and to multiply and ensure a healthy generation to come and pick up wisely where we left off. Let's read that one more time, that 28 verse. And the Most High blessed them, and the Most High said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And the Most High said, Behold, I have given you every herb, bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Now hold Leviticus the second chapter. Now we have dominion over the earth. And we want you to be fruitful and multiply. These are the purposes of men. 
Now, men have sought out many crazy inventions that my destination on this earth is to be uh, whatever, a politician, a police officer, a fireman. I want to be a superstar. I want my name and lights. I want to be a rapper. I want to be a stripper. I want to be a male stripper. We all have these cockamamie ideas and thoughts about what it is that we want to be. And everybody is skipping the purpose that you was made to be. That's why you have so many people who have reached that epitome and become politicians and superstars and, and musicians. And when they reach there, they say, it felt like this. it would be better than this. You know, after I have uh, done all my dastardly sexual immoral things, I still feel empty and hollow and void because you're walking without purpose. The Heavenly Father said, once again, y'all going to have dominion. If not over the whole earth, men have dominion over your family. And sisters, support him in his dominion. Support him in being fruitful and multiplying and having a godly family. And thirdly, I have given every herb bearing seed that shall be meat unto you. Don't let these veggie heads, these vegans, take our culture and heritage and say, 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 the Lord wants you to be vegans and vegetarians. No, it's not about being vegans and vegetarians. You are corrupting the scriptures, the word of the heavenly father. When the father says here that third component that I want you to be a part of, let's look at what he's talking about. Leviticus, the second chapter, and pick it up at the very first verse. And when any will offer a meat offering. This word meat is talking about grains. It's talking about corn. It's talking about wheat. It's talking about agriculture. And then it's talking about you offering it to the Most High in worship. Let's read. His offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. Jump down to the 11th verse. No meat offering which ye shall bring unto the Lord shall be made with leaven. The fathers asked him for specificities in the meat offering. Jump down to the 13th verse. The 12th verse. As for the oblation of the first fruits. These meat offerings are oblations and sacrificing. Now we're talking about in that sixth covenant, which was Moses' covenant. But in the seventh covenant, or the seventh covenant that was given to David, sprinkled by the blood of our high priest Yahweh, the father still requires sacrifice. Howbeit they are spiritual now. They are spiritual. Jump down to the 13th verse. And every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy power to be lacking from thy meat offering. The father saying these are the specifics of a meat offering. So when the father said I have given Adam and Eve every herb bearing seed to be meat offerings. The father said I want y'all to have dominance over the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. And I want you to worship the most high our power. And Eve. I want you to support him in the worship and the endeavors of righteousness and godliness. This is the purpose of a godly woman. This is the purpose of a virtuous woman. This is why it's so rare. This is why it is, it is, it is a, 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 like sighting a, finding a Bigfoot. I saw a Bigfoot last night. And what you going to say? That brother was, <laughs> brother, you was drinking. You was drinking. You saw a Bigfoot. I mean, I thought I saw, yeah, you was, you was sipping a little something. It's the same thing can be said about a virtuous woman. Brother, I saw a virtuous woman. You've you been drinking, brother. You've been drinking. You saw a virtuous I ain't seen no virtuous woman in these parts, brother, in 30 years. It's a rare thing because our sisters are prone to be lifted and indoctrinated with the ways of the world. And this is why Solomon came back and said that our sisters are going to be reformed. Change. Virtuous women will. There are some women listening to this class that can't make it past this point right now. It's got to get cut off. Because they got too much testosterone in their system. They are, in all, for all intents and purposes, little mini men running around. Thinking that they are the ones that should be preaching the gospel. They are the ones that should be giving the meat offering. They are the ones that the most are listening to. And men are nothing. The Lord deal with me. You out of your purpose. You're out of your zone. Therefore, you're out of your mind. Mosai said it is a rare thing to find a woman who comprehend her purpose. 
and therefore has increased her worth by supporting and aiding that man who is dominating his world. That man that is elevating in this society. That man that is being fruitful with responsibility and multiplying. And that man that will not settle for less when it comes to offering unto the Most High the worship and the service of the Heavenly Father. That right there is synergy that is priceless. You can come and offer that brother. Yeah, brother, here's $10 million. I, I, brother, you can keep all that. I don't want nothing to do with that. Me and my... My spouse, we're rolling on. We can continue on because it's natural, spiritually natural. We're going to leave there. And we're going to go to the book of Esther. And we're going to pick it up in the very first verse. So now we're talking about some of the principles and the pretext to a virtuous woman. Let's bring in some insight on what it is or what it is not to do. Let's look at and contextualize how women engaged back in the day and the father frowned upon it. Let's get the book of Esther, the first chapter, and uh, start the very first verse. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, that is, Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days when the king Ahasuerus set on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, and the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. When he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty many days, even in 104 score days. Now we have the king of Persia, Media. We being in subjection to them, he's showing the grandeur and the glory of his kingdom, ruling from India all the way to Afra, or Africa and Ethiopia, showing off the grand majesty of his kingdom. He partied for 104 score or 180 days, half a year, right there showing how he can actually take a break from toiling and just celebrate his victories. Let's read verse five. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan the palace, both unto great and small, seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings, fastened with cords of fine linen and purple, to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance according to the state of the king. Now the king, in a celebratory state, brought people into his royal palace, black marble, blues and purples, and brung forth his chamberlains, and brung forth the high men of his, of his kingdom, and said, let us drink, let us be merry. I am showing you that this is a feast of all feasts. This, my name is on it. And so your heart's desire is my duty to fulfill. And so he was grandstanding at this moment. This is his purpose. This was his job to sit forth and to bring forth that domineering spirit that our father, our heavenly father told us as his children to operate in. Albeit these are the heathens, but still a purpose to be, or still meat and understanding to be gleaned from this. Let's pick it up where you left. Verse 8. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel. For so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti, the queen. So now we have here that the king said, look, drink to your heart's content. Be responsible. You're here with kings. You're here with royalty. And there's not a vessel. Bring all the gold vessels. Bring the best. So he rolled out. I mean, there was no stops here. He just rolled them all out and said, this is an occasion that will be, re be remembered throughout the ages. Pick it up in the ninth verse again. Also Vashti, the queen made a feast for the women 
in the royal house. Now the queen, the king's wife, said the king is doing it big. Therefore, I will do it big as well. I will make a feast for the women and I will do it in the king's house. Let's read. In the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahuman, Bista, Harbona, Bigta, and Abagta, Zithar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Hasurius the king, to bring Vashi the queen. So the king, he was sipping on a little something, something. The music was playing, the jokes were flying. He was having a good time. It was great, it was honorable. And he said, I'm here with all the brethren. Summons my wife, bring her here. Let's pick it up there again, 11 verse. To bring Vashi, the queen before the king with the crown royal. Bring her with that pomp and circumstance. Bring her with all the jewels and the raiment and everything. He was trying to floss a little bit in front of his constituency so that they can see how beautiful and how great his wife is. Read it again. To bring Vashi, the queen, before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. The queen, the king looked and said, look, look, I've seen all your wives and they are beautiful. They are gorgeous, actually, but none can compare to what I got. All right, none summons my wife Vashti, that beautiful beacon of light. Tell her to come and address herself with royalty. Put the jewels and the pearl and the gems on. She is my crown. Tell her to come amongst us. Let's read. Verse 12. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlain. Wait up. The chamberlain came in and said, a, a king, a, 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 can I talk to you in person? No, 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 no person, it was personal amongst friends. Speak out, what's going on? No, I think you need to hear this in person. Uh, speak! Uh, queen Vashti said, F you. W what? W what? Yeah, queen Vashti said, F you, I'm with the women. You out your mind, you think I'm going to lead these women? We over here, we have it out sorority party. And what did that make the king feel? Therefore was the king very wroth. The king was mad. What? What? Why? Because his heart's supposed to safely trust in him. And when he's engaged in an endeavor, she's supposed to be a helpmate, a pillar of rest. But what is happening to Queen Vashti? She has got sidetracked into her own endeavors. Me and the girls, we chillin'. We just made a pumpernickel cake. And we got some champagne and some bubbly. And we doing this. I ain't gonna spend my time. You know how it is. You get sidetracked from your purpose. So her purpose on earth was to help her husband dominate. Be fruitful and multiply. And praise the Heavenly Father. But her girlfriends came in. Her friend girls was there. She was trying to impress them. Read that again. Verse 12, but the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commanded by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his angry anger burned in him. Then and his the anger burned. Hold that. We're coming right back there. Get Ecclesiasticus 25, and let's pick it up in uh, 23. Ecclesiasticus, the Apocrypha, 25 and 23. And your situation might be different. But they're all applicable. Once again, we have to be reformed. You do not have to lie to yourself. You do not have to say you was born into support your husband. The world has taught us to be narcissistic, to be self-indulged, to think only about ourselves. We get into relationships and sisters got their own bank account. They got their own. Everything is, you're married. You're literally together. But she got her stuff. You got your stuff. You know what that means? She can leave at any moment. That, that's what that means, is that if this man start popping off at the mouth, that's all it takes is about an hour to get my crap into my stuff, keys in the car, and on to the next one. 
You have not made any kind of cohesive decision that we are bound for life because you lost your purpose. You lost your position that the Heavenly Father have given you. Ecclesiastes 25 and uh, 23. A wicked woman abateth the courage, maketh an heavy countenance. A wicked woman abateth the courage. She knocks down a man's courage. The king was there being very courageous amongst his men. Like I said, he probably said, your wives are beautiful, gorgeous, in fact. And I like you, brother, you, you're on point. Drum roll, please. But here's my wife. Vashti come here, and there was nothing behind the curtain. Nothing but a big F and a U. And you know how it is when you're king, you know, you know your man you respect. Get dissed. It's probably his, his men just looked away, like yeah, act like they was talking, like they didn't even see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They saw it. The king got dissed. This is the man we look up to. The man we respect. She abated the courage. Read it again. A wicked woman abated the courage, maketh an heavy countenance and a wounded heart. Making a heavy countenance and a wounded heart. The king was angry. He was wroth. Look at what happened. He was jubilant. He was happy. He was sipping on a little something, something. They was, the jokes were flying. Everybody was having the fun. The music was there. It was all done with, with moderation. He was in good spirit. But like that, it went from high jubilation to anger and wrath. Because the actions of his counterpart. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 25 verse 23. A wicked woman abateth the courage, maketh a heavy countenance, and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. A woman that will not comfort her husband in a moment of distress or even jubilee make weak hands and feeble knees. Make it impossible for that young man, brother, old man, or brother, to begin to build and to grow. This is why it is important, it is critically important that we both, male and female, get our acts together and be reformed. Don't deny the truth. Look at the world and begin to cast off those mortal thoughts that they have indoctrinated into you. Cast off your own personal aspirations and submit yourself to the architect. The Heavenly Father is the one that designed you. And he designed you with purpose. But you thought, I don't want to do that. You the coffee pot and said, I don't want to make coffee. I, I, I want to be a car. Get in me and drive me around. You are a coffee pot. You are not a vehicle. Make coffee and you will be happy. And you will grow and you will learn to make all types of different brands of coffee now. Now, now Starbucks wants you. But as long as you deny your purpose, you're living out of purpose. And you got no worth, no value, and you'll be confused all the days of your life. I think that value is uh, reading again. Read that again. Please ask us chapter 25, verse 23. A wicked woman obeyeth the courage, maketh an heavy countenance, and wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. All right, we're going to go back, leave that, and let's go back to uh, the book of Esther, the first chapter, and pick it up at the 12th verse once again. So we have the queen coming to the king, and she found out that she stepped out of purpose. Well, she didn't find out yet, but she stepped out of purpose. And she had a big hoopla going on with her and her girls, and she got caught up in it. And when the king called her to do what the Most High created her to do, she declined. And she said, no, I am caught up. And so, sisters, like I said, you can put this in your own world. How many times you get caught up in your own stuff, and when it comes to supporting your husband, you ain't there for him? How many times you got caught up into being there for him, as they say in the world, ride or die, but spiritually, you wit him. And if you're not with him, you are dead. Because you're out of purpose of the most high. 12th verse, Esther 1 verse 12. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth and his anger burned in him. 
Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshina, Sethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Marez, Marcina, and Mamukan, the seven princes of Persia and Midia, which saw the king's face and which sat the first in the king's in the kingdom. Verse 15. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of King Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. They all came together, the wise men of the kingdom, and say, what shall we do about this? This is a woman that is refusing to do the commandments of the king. This is a woman that is refusing to walk in order with what the heavenly father has put down. What shall we do? Wise men came together at a council. Let's read. Verse 16. And Mamukin answered before the king and the princess, Vashi the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes. This woman did not only do the king wrong, she did us wrong too. We look up to you, king. We look up to you. She has done the whole empire wrong. Meaning there's ramifications for every decision that you make. You throw that rock in that pond, you're going to make some ripples. And you must be conscientious of the ripples that you make. The ripples for evil or the ripples for positivity. And they saw the ramifications and the ripples for evil being spread throughout his entire kingdom. This is a man that his enemies looked at and quaked and said, I fear the king. You better pay them taxes. He will roll on you. Now the word go out, that man ain't rolling on Jack. His wife put up a big old F and a U to his face. And the man start crying like a little baby. I ain't paying no damn taxes. That's the ramifications. And so they said, she done did the whole empire wrong. This woman is not in purpose. She is not there having your back, king. Read on. And to all the people that are, that are in all the provinces of the king, Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported. Mm, mm, mm. This thing will be as infectious as the Ebola virus. When they turn around, this is them. And they watch Queen Vashti mouthing off, snapping her finger, rolling her neck. This is ancient empire. This is ancient housewife. What's some of them other crappy garbage shows out there? You know any? I don't watch that filth, but I hear it through social media. This is them watching ancient love and hip hop. Did you see what? What? When every woman see it, they will be inculcated into the ways of nastiness. That should have been a real name, not Vasty, but Nasty. Nasty Vasty, who know not the ways of the Most High. Teaching that nasty, putrefied, spiritual, abjectness, garbage that will infect the daughters of the kingdom. If Queen Vasty can say to hell with the king, I can surely say to hell with my husband, who is just a, a brick man, a brick mason. He's a little carpenter. He got a little, little, little grass cutting business. Surely I could say to hell with him and there would be no ramifications. And what did they do? These are wise men coming together. Let's read that again, 17 verse. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. When it shall be reported, the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Midia say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much corruption and wrath. There shall arise too much contempt, corruption and wrath. Even the heathens knew that if you began to behave yourself unseemly and stepping out of order of purpose, that that thing will catch on contagiously like the HIV virus. 
It will be all over the place and you will not be able to contain it, inoculate it, or get rid of it. Our sisters will be utterly destroyed. Therefore, our men will also be destroyed. It is a self-deprecate, a, a absolute dysfunctional relationship and dysfunctional situation that we have put ourselves in. When you begin to let women step out of order and men step out of order, what is the benefit of it? Who benefits from it? Your enemies. This is why Lee Daniels, can he can make a show about anything. And they're going to put him and Tyler Perry can make a show in 100% of the time, it's going to have some homosexuality in it. I can, or some cross-dressing in it. Because these are the two figures that they want to put up to be deplorables of our people. But put them up as good so that they can indoctrinate in the minds of our people what not to be. I mean, literally putting up there exactly the opposite of what we should do. So imagery and perspective coming into our minds change us. The Gentiles knew it back then, that if we let this imagery fly out there, that it's going to begin to come amongst the young, the youth, and they're not going to respect nor reverence their husbands anymore, and they're going to step out of their godly, given purpose. Let's continue. Verse 19. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashi come no more before King Ahasuerus. Let this be, king, please, if you allow us to do this, please, please. Let a royal law come that you cut that big mouth heifer off. Stop evil in its track. She is not supporting you in your dominance of the earth. She is not being fruitful and multiplying. And she is not supporting you in the things you do for the heavenly father. That's it. What is her purpose? She has no purpose. She has lost her way. And she is not penitent. She is not remorseful. She's snapping her finger and rolling her neck. She is actually out there trying to destroy the whole kingdom. Let's continue. And let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Let what she had be taken from her and given to somebody more worthy, somebody more on point. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, this happened to us all. Stepping out of character will cause you to lose anything that you might have gained. And it caused you to impede upon gaining any true wealth, any true value any true greatness from the heavenly father. Stepping out of character is not for our own good. Stepping out of purpose is for the benefit of our adversaries and the enemies. Let's read. Verse 20. And when the king's decree, which he shall make, shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great. All the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. To both great and and small, not just the king's wives and the great chamberlains and the great legislators, their wives shall stand up and support and aid, but even the small brothers who haven't come up yet, they need that reverence and respect as well. They need that support. They need that helpmate. They need that pillar of rest. And so this is the difference. We're talking about the difference between a virtuous woman and frankly, a whore, a harlot. Someone who has gone away from the principles of the Most High. A spiritual harlot who is now sitting and supping at the table of the adversary. Taking down his commandments. Taking down his edicts. And not submitting herself to the tenets of the Heavenly Father. It's time to reverse the curse. It's time to backtrack and say, look at all the things that I've accumulated in my journey in Western society. I got to peel this off and take that off. I got to get rid of this and get rid of that. And like an onion, get down to the very core of it and see that little pearl in the middle and say, that is the pearl of a great price, a great possession. That's the core of who I really am. Now let's build upon that and layer up with the wisdom of the Heavenly Father. Let's continue. Verse 21. And the saying pleased the king and the princess. And the king did according to the word of Memukin. 
For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. That is a godly society. Where every man shall bear rule. If you're not a great king ruling, uh, dominating over the entire earth, at the very minimum, dominate in your own house. We live in a society that is anti that. We live in a society where if you are a man, you're the head of the household, that's frowned upon. You ever see these garbage commercials where always making a man look stupid? Always looking like he's a doofus and a little clown and a woman put him in check? They're subtly indoctrinating you with this filth. Every man shall run his own house in godliness and in righteousness, brothers. We talked about that already. We talked about men standing up being integral and honorable and leading their whole household. But sisters, we directing this to you. You've got to understand the purpose of a virtuous woman is to aid and abed and support and to hold up and to keep up a godly man dominating his house, multiplying in his house, increasing in his house, but most importantly, offering up those meat offerings and worship the Most High, support him in every facet. And even the Gentiles knew that we must make this a proclamation throughout the entire earth so that every man in our kingdom will know that at the very least in his home, he is Lord, he is King. He is the prime minister of that little realm he got right there. And this is indeed the purpose of godliness on a man's part and on a female's part. Let's leave there and get Ecclesiasticus, the 25th chapter, and we're going to pick it up in the 19th verse. So now we see the picture, picture perfect of a recidivist type of female, a sister, a woman, that woman that gets sidetracked by her own purpose, her own career, her own agenda. And just want a man for I don't know what. So she can have that picture of a godly or good family. But she does not replicate the tenets of the most high. That's a vasty. That's that vasty type. We're not looking for vasty. We're looking for the righteous daughters of Zion. The daughters of wisdom. Those sisters who are looking for a higher purpose. Than this crap that western society has force fed our daughters. It's time to vomit all that crap up. Come back to what it is that the Father has designed you to be like. Ecclesiastes 25, 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. All wickedness is little compared to a woman who is off track now. There is no stopping her. Satan is in her and he will not stop until she hit that brick wall. Let's read let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Let the portion, or let her be tandem with a sinner, an evil man. I know there's those out there, hey, what are you talking about? That's because, that's like the woman needs some love and she just need, let me show you what that's talking about even more. Ecclesiastes 26 now and 23. It says, let her portion be tandem with a wicked man. Let her always be running through men and every one of them dog, dirty, wicked as hell. Let's get it. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Boom. Boom. A wicked woman is reserved as a portion for a wicked man. Oh, you want to talk about the law of attraction? Oh, that's the law of attraction right there. You wicked as hell then you need to be reserved for that wicked man, right? Y'all come together and multiply in wickedness. And she's always, I don't know why I meet these type of men. I don't know why. I know why. Oh, yeah, I know why. Read it again. A wicked woman. A wicked woman who's the vasty types, narcissistic, self-absolved, all into our own thing, will never submit, capitulate to the rules and the tenets of the Heavenly Father. Read. Is given as a portion to a wicked man. She is reserved. A righteous man just went right past her. No, that ain't, that's not for you. That's not for you, Vashti. Not for you. Another righteous man is not Vashti. Don't even try to talk to him. Don't it? Here he is right there. Here he comes. Dude got crack in his back pocket. Got heroin in his front pocket. Just got out of jail. Dude, he's, 
He's, he's, he's just toe up from the flow up. How you doing, girl? What's up? And you fall for it every time. It don't even have to be that. It can be the upstanding looking brother. Still off. Dude got eight women all over the place. Running through him. Like diarrhea. He, I keep beating the wrong. Yeah. If you change your trajectory, you will change your outcome. When you begin to reform and reshape yourself, then the father will say, here comes a righteous man now. Read the second part. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. A godly woman will be reserved. Now, Quan came by, the father said to the right, mm -mm, mm -mm, don't even mess with him, don't even mess with him. Leroy, can, don't, don't mess with Leroy. Mm -mm. Tyrone came, but don't, don't do it. Just go, keep praying, sis. Just keep praying. Now here come the brother. Yahweh Dabun Yashua'ala. Coming by, girded up righteous. Reading his scriptures. Walking in the laws in the new covenant. Spiritually administering the precepts of the Most High. Commandments and statutes. He's on point in everything he do. He too has been praying to the Most High. He too has been begging and asking the Father, send me. Bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And all of a sudden, your paths meet. And once again, it's synergy. It's love from the beginning, from the start, from the come up. They began to grow in that biblical, spiritual camaraderie. This is what it is to be a virtuous woman. But it's not going to happen if you don't suffer some of the lumps, if you don't suffer some of the pain, I should say. Peeling off scabs off your skin, it hurts. But we got to do it. Peel off that filth. Wash ourselves, cleanse ourselves, humble ourselves. Let's have a broken and contrite heart and begin to realize that this world has put upon us all types of filthiness that must get undressed. And before you can be righteous in the eyes of the Most High, you must come butt naked. Spiritually, you got to undress and take all those filthy garments off. And then the father can adorn you with the robe of righteousness, with those pearls and jewels and gems that make you that crown that we started off with. Let's read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. A dishonest woman, contempt, shame, but a honest woman will reverence her husband. A honest woman will reverence her husband, support and aid her husband because she understands that he is indeed, get the uh, 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3 and 1. She understands that he is indeed the king and the Lord of that house. And she is there to aid and support for him to go out and conquer and bring home. And that they must be fruitful and multiply. And they must worship the Most High. And tearing him down is actually tearing yourself down. Questioning and doubting him is questioning and doubting yourself and the children and everything that was spawned in that relationship that the Heavenly Father has brung together. So let's set aside the pride and the arrogance. Let's set aside the vitriol and the hate and the steam that is flowing right now. Because the world have taught you that you don't need no man. I can pay my own bill. I can do bad by myself. You sure can. And you can still do bad with him. Let's learn not to do bad. Let's learn to do good. Let's learn to be right. 1 Peter 3 and 1. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Wives, be in subjection in the order, in the domain, in the kingdom of your husband. That they who are outside that are the Vashti types can look and see that synergy, that energy, that flow and say, I want to be like that. Be an example to them brothers and sisters that are out, that are knocking their heads, beating their heads up and down the wall. Why you won't do this? I tell you why you won't do that. You keep walking in wickedness and you're going to attract that wickedness that you espouse to. But look at him, look at her, look at them, look at their family. They are the pillar and the picture perfect example and example of what it is to be godliness. The Heavenly Father is telling us when we do come together, 
Come together, not just for yourselves, your own family, but be that picture for that brothers and sisters who are out there that don't know what it is to see a godly family working together. We've all seen brothers and sisters, and we've all know somebody or have experience coming up in single family homes or dysfunctional homes, coming up in abusive homes, homes where everybody is out of whack, out of order. As I said from the, from the onset, your beginnings does not define your end. And where you are now does not define where you're going. You now can make that conscientious decision and say, I don't want to live like this anymore. I've seen the end result. It is a rat wheel, a hamster wheel. You always think you're going to get something. You're always chasing that proverbial carrot and you're never, ever, ever in your life going to get a chance to taste it. I want to get off that wheel. The Heavenly Father will provide bigger and better things, a more purposeful life. I might not be millionaire status, but I will be even more happy than all the millionaires in this earth combined when me and my husband and our family come together and we are enjoying those moments, those quaint moments, those beautiful moments, that cold night where it's freezing outside, but we're warm inside doing whatever we do that we enjoy. And we work hard through the week so we can make it to that point and enjoy time together. This is happiness. Other folks is jetting set all over the earth trying to preserve and keep their money by engaging in wickedness and sleeping over here, sleeping over that, infidelity over here. We have in our moment of joy and godliness. This is what it is to be a virtuous woman. Let's continue on. Verse 2. While they behold your chaste conversations coupled with fear. Whose adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. This is what it is to be godly. The Heavenly Father is telling you that your internal beauty supersedes and exceeds that external beauty. That external beauty is absolute vanity. It's vanity, meaning it has very little profit. This is not why godly men get with spiritual women, because they were sexy. No, godly men penetrated the flesh and saw within the mind and saw her work ethic, her go get a spirit. But most importantly, he saw her ability to support and aid a man who is on his journey to worship the Most High. Let's continue. Which is in the sight of the Most High of great price. Verse 5. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in the Most High adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Why did Sarah obey Abraham, calling him Lord? Because he was the Lord of his house. He wasn't ruling anything at the time. He was out as a nomad, moving around into the land that the father promised to give to his offspring. But she called him Lord because he was the Lord of his household. And this is how you must reverence your husband. Call him Lord. Call him his, the king. Re address him with that domineering spirit that the father has put upon him. A woman that won't do that is a woman that don't recognize his greatness. And she is always in competition with him. She is at war with him. Let's continue. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. If you are not afraid, why would a woman be afraid to call her husband with that great title of Lord or, or the head of this household? She is amazed at what her friends might say. What? You call that man Lord? You call that man the head of the house? Mm -mm, I got one Lord. That's Jesus Christ. Is it? You don't know what you're talking about. This man is the head of this household. This man guides this house. What he says goes. And that's a pious, virtuous, and righteous woman. This is a woman that has shelled off that, that hard veneer, that callous veneer that she has gotten in this world. And have learned to come home to godliness. Let's read. Verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, 
dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel. Giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel, the subservient vessel, that, that helpmate, that pillar of rest, as we have already covered. Give it honor unto her, not as your equal, as the world preaches, not that woman that's going to stand beside you and not by, she stands behind you. You're going to fall, you're going to fall backwards. She is there to hold you. She is there to keep you up. Let's continue. And as being heirs together of the grace of life. We are to be heirs together. It is not that he, you are his subject. You're a peon in his kingdom. It's not that you are there to be used and abused. You are heirs together of the grace of life. When he receive it, you receive it. Your children receive it. And everybody connected to you and your family in abode receive it. Read that again. Call the chapter and the verse. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. We have to be of one mind, one accord, not divisive, not you got your own vashti girlfriend party happening over here, and he got his king thing over there. We are to merge together. When a husband and a wife come together, they are no more twain, but one flesh. One mind, one accord, one agenda, building on the principles of the Heavenly Father to that new height never reached before in terms of family, in terms of you too. Drop that and let's go back to Proverbs now, the 31st chapter. And pick it up in the, uh, the 10th verse again. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Who can find? Get Ecclesiastes 7, verse 26. And as we begin to close down this seven pillar class, we're going to walk you through the seven pillars and show brothers and sisters, or sisters in this particular case, how we are to be in the last days. It's good to learn about your history and your cultures, laws, statutes, and commandments. Those things are drastically on point. But we're not a one-trick pony. We're not one-dimensional people. We can think upon other dimensions at the same time, reforming ourselves so that we can be part and parcel of the reformation that shall happen to our nation. And you are directly responsible for the changes that happen to you and your family. Ecclesiastes 7, 26. And I find more bitter than... Death, the woman. I find more bitter than death. This is Solomon. Same author of the Proverbs. He said, I find more bitter than death, a wicked woman. Meaning an experience of you losing someone that you love dear, dearly. A compadre, a family member, a friend. He said, it's something worse than that. It's the wickedness of a woman. A woman that's out of purpose, misaligned. And off. Read. Whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth the most high shall escape from her. He who pleaseth the most high. Because a righteous woman is given to a righteous man, and a wicked woman to a wicked man. The father said that that righteous man is going to escape her. That wicked woman. That is nothing but snares and nets and traps for a godly man to fall into. Read on. But the sinner shall be taken by her. Verse 27. Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher. Counting one by one, do find out their account. Solomon said, I put myself on a, uh, a, a scholastic, deep, academic study. I started counting all the women in my providence. Let's read. Which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found. One man. I started counting the men. I found a thousand. Men. I found one righteous. How many righteous among? How many virtuous women did he find amongst a thousand? But a woman 
Among all those have I not found. Among women, I did not find not one virtuous woman. Not one. Brothers and sisters or sisters, you can live your whole life and you can reject this. Or you can face the truth that now is a time for good spiritual change. Change your way, you will change your outcome. You will leave this dismal state that you find yourself in and finally achieve that domestic marital bliss that the Heavenly Father has stored up for you. Solomon has done the numbers. He had run the numbers for us already. And amongst a thousand, I have found not one virtuous woman. You can live your entire life and never walk into knowledge, understanding, discretion, equity, justice, judgment, and glean that wisdom, Holy Spirit, and virtue. Live your whole life like Vashti. Your end result will be like Vashti. Your possessions taken away and given to another. You don't want that. We don't want that. We of the House of Wisdom are here to empower our brothers and our sisters, empowering small microcosmic families. But microcosmic families coming together make an empowered, emboldened nation working together in synergy like a family works in synergy, but with the Godhead with the Heavenly Father, with our High Priest. Let's finish that up. Verse 29. Lo, this only have I found, that the Most High hath made man upright. The Heavenly Father hath made man and woman initially upright. But what has happened? But they have sought out many inventions. They have sought out many things other than what the Heavenly Father hath put upon us. Now are the, day, are the days of reformation. Now are the days of change. Now is the days of conversion and repentance and remodeling and reshaping who you are and who you will be. So brothers and sisters, or sisters, as we begin to close this, take this seriously. You are now in control because the Heavenly Father, by way of the Holy Spirit, has given you the understanding of this knowledge. Now walk with discretion. You now know what's right, and you now know what's wrong. Choose right, and be equitable with that right. Use this with your friends, use it with your father, use it with your husbands. And then make it up in your mind that this is who I'm going to be forever, justice. I have a continuum of doing right from this day forth and forevermore. And when you see a situation, when you observe the situation, if you are married, you'll see that thing happen 10 minutes from you listening to this class. Judge the situation to allow your husband to be the Lord and the king of that house and support him. That's judgment. And when you actually do it, you have stepped among the ranks of wise women. Now, Proverbs 31.10, now the question can be asked, who can find a virtuous woman? And a man can say, I... I know the answer to that. I found one, and she's sitting right next to me. Another brother can say, I've found that too. She's sitting right here to the right of me. Another brother can say, I've found, my daughter right here is a virtuous reader, Proverbs 31.10. Another man can stand up and say, I've seen that thing. It used to be extinct, but all of a sudden, a beautiful, healthy community of virtuous men and virtuous women are coming back on this earth. Read. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need to spoil her. She so, will, read on. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. So sisters, take this information extremely critically seriously and let's begin to reform our lives i am priest banyala with the house of wisdom may the lord bless you multiply you increase you and empower you to glean that virtue as it rains from heaven like water peace and blessings shalom